Today, we're going to learn how you can make the sick text animation in After Effects. How is it going, guys? And welcome to the Olufemi channel. We're a group of teachers that want to shore up your video production skills in as little time as possible. Yo, it's Herman here back on the Olufemi channel and welcome to the second video in our text animation week. As a refresher, I'll be sharing five text animation tutorials this week that fuse design trends so you can easily make something presentable for either a title card, logo stinger, or YouTube intro. Now, the first video we focused on the theme of minimalism. So we're going to go to the opposite end of the spectrum today with maximalism. Instead of less is more, maximalism is the aesthetic of more is more. So we're basically going to cram a bunch of things to fill up any negative space while making it look good. As mentioned in the previous video, I'll be going forward with the assumption that you know your After Effects basics, meaning you know what most of the tools do, you know what the interface is like, you know, masking, keyframing, that kind of stuff. If you don't, you can check out my After Effects basics tutorial to learn from scratch. You can click that little pop up. Now you can download the project file I'm using in the description below so you can follow along. Some of these assets are going to be offline, unfortunately, but you can still check it out. Otherwise, let's fire up After Effects and hop in front of your computer if you're not watching this on a computer already. So we have the program opened. Are you guys ready for this? I don't think you guys are ready for this. First thing we're going to do, as always, we're going to create a new comp by hitting this button over here to create a new comp. We call it maximalism main. Put that into main comps. And then, ooh, starting from scratch, this blank slate. What are we going to do? We're going to do first create a text layer by hitting the icon over here for the text tool. We're just going to click somewhere random. We're going to type maximalism. Oh my, that is quite small. We're talking about maximalism here. It's going to be big. So we're going to highlight all of it by hitting control A to highlight everything. And we're just going to change the size to something like that. And this is the font from the previous tutorial on minimalism. We're going to change it up. We're going to use a sans serif font. So it's going to be a font that's cleaner. It doesn't have that decorative brush stroke at the end. And for the design that we're going with, it's going to look a little bit more modern, a little more futuristic. So we're going to go with a font that's also on the Adobe font library uh, called NASA Lization like that. That's a pretty cool looking font. And just like what we did before, we're going to hit control alt home so that we have the anchor point in the center of this text and then control home so that we center it to the composition. Actually, this is looking a little bit big. So I'm just going to shrink it down a little bit and then hit the same shortcuts so that it is in the dead center of the composition. And here we go. Let's animate this. First thing we're going to do is create a flicker animation. And in order to do so, we're going to hit this arrow. So we have this drop down menu and then under animate over here, hit this nice little button and we're going to go to opacity. And that's what we're going to animate. We're going to animate the opacity by Changing the opacity under the range selector one over here, we're gonna make it zero like that. And as you can see, the text has disappeared, but it won't be for long because we're going to hit this arrow next to range selector. And basically what the range selector means is that for the start, 0%, that means all the way over to the right, it will be zero opacity. And then all the way to 100, it'll like reveal itself. So as you can see, if I drag this over, the higher the percentage, the more to the right it is. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna animate it so that we hit the stopwatch by creating a keyframe over here, and we're gonna make it zero. And then we're gonna go to about a second, and then we can make it 100, so it kinda reveals itself. So, good start, but it's not quite flickering yet. So we're also going to animate the end position, so it's at 100, and then in the middle over here, we'll make it something like 20, like that, and then back to 100. Like that. So now what we have is kind of like this. And basically what's happening is it's showing from right to left as well. So it's kind of like coming together. So what we're going to do next is we're going to play with the offset. We're going to change that to something like 30. And basically all that's doing is it's shifting everything over by 30%. So instead of it coming from the sides over to the center like that, we are now just shifting it over a little bit so that it feels a little more random, I suppose. Although it's flickering a little bit, this isn't the final look that we're going for. We're going to go to advanced over here like that. So that's under your range selector. And then we're going to randomize the order. And that's this box over here. Right now it's set to off. We're going to click that so it turns on. And then now the order of it will be a little more randomized. So this is getting closer to what we're going for, but not quite yet. We're going to hide this drop down menu by clicking the arrow next to animator one. And we'll even rename this to something like flicker one and hit control S because saving is important. Make sure that this effect is highlighted. We're going to hit control D, which will duplicate the effect. And we now have a flicker two. We're going to hit the drop down menu, hit the drop down menu again. So we see these keyframes over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to highlight these and we're going to offset them by about two frames and watch what happens. My computer freezes. That's what happens. Oh, there we go. Let's play it back from the beginning. 
So this is looking closer to what we're looking for because it looks a lot more random. And then now at this point, we just adjust the keyframes to your taste so that it looks a little more uh, punchy, a little more snappy. So I think I'm going to also hit the drop down menu over here. So we see the keyframes and I'm just going to make this area a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the keyframes like this. I'm going to hold down alt. Okay, and I'm going to drag one side of the keyframes like this, and then it will basically not shift everything over. It will kind of like shorten everything. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here as well. And then I'm actually going to offset it just a little more. And then I'm trying to make it look a little more random. Like that. So the only gripe that I have right now is that it's showing this M over here in the very beginning. So what I can do is I'm going to keyframe the offset. So we're going to hit the stopwatch. So at 30%, I kind of like what it looks like in the middle. So I'll just move that over there. And then we're going to start it at zero. So that way, we have something kind of like that. And then after some moving around of the keyframes, kind of like left and right, this is what I end up with. And I'm quite happy with that. That is your Flickr animation. A great way to add this kind of like futuristic modern feel to your text, depending on the project that you work on. I think that this will be a great addition to your tool belt. So the next thing we're going to animate is the tracking. So what that means is the spacing between the letters. So we're going to basically just hide all this stuff. So we're going to go to animate over here. And instead of opacity, we're going to go to tracking. Basically, uh, we're also working with the range selector, but this tracking amount is going to be the amount of how much of a space we want in between each letter. We can start off at something like, I don't know, 23 like that and then what we can do is we can hit the drop down menu for the range selector and we can start off with a zero like this by keyframing it by hitting the stopwatch and then at the end over here we can make it 100 so it closes all this gap and then we can even highlight them hit f9 so that we can easy ease the keyframes giving it a bit of a smoother feel and then i'm just going to highlight one of the keyframes and go to the graph editor that's what this icon is and if you're not already in the speed graph which is what this is showing right now you can hit this icon over here and then make sure that the edit speed graph is checked off. So we're going to make sure that we have this keyframe selected and we're just going to drag the handle so that it starts a little bit faster and then it ramps down. So it gives this nice, smooth feeling. So if I play it back, this is what it looks like. I can even move the keyframes to something that I'm happy with. And you can even play with the offset a little bit. So let's say like negative 20 and then you get just like a different taste to it. So there are two techniques that you can apply right away to your text and create some dope animations. Now we've got a good start, but this white text on black background is looking a little plain. So we're going to lean into the whole maximalism theme and start adding some other things. So the next thing I want to draw is a border. And I'm going to do a rounded border. So I'm going to make sure that I have the rounded rectangle tool selected. And if I don't have this selected already, I can just hold down over here and then just make sure that I have this selected. And then we're just going to draw something like this. I'm going to hold down the up or down arrow to make it either more rounded or less rounded. So if I hold down up, as you can see, it's making it a little more rounded. This is a little bit too much. So I'm going to bring it back down by hitting down like so. I'm going to find a nice in between kind of like this. Okay. And I want this to look like it's surrounding the composition, but right now it's just kind of like offset, right? So I'm going to hit this arrow so that we see more of this. Go to rectangle path like that. And we're gonna change the size to the same dimensions as this composition. In this case, I'm just gonna unlink it by hitting this chain over here so that I can just put my own values and it's not gonna be like linked aspect ratio. And I'm gonna hit control, alt, home so that I center the anchor point to the shape. And then I'm gonna hit control, home so that it's nice and centered. And we're gonna change the width of the stroke a little bit thicker, 35 is not bad, somewhere around like the same thickness as these letters. And now I'm gonna bring up my grids by hitting control apostrophe like this. So I'm gonna drag this value over here, the 1920 right now, and I'm gonna drag it all the way until it is within, I guess, one box between the edge. So I'm using that as a reference. So uh, that has been adjusted for both sides. And then now for the top and bottom, I'm gonna drag the other number over here, which is 1080 right now. We're just gonna drag it to something like over here. And I'm gonna turn off the grids by hitting the same shortcut, control apostrophe. And this is what it looks like right now. The border is looking a little bit thick, so I'm just gonna highlight it and I'm going to change it so it's something, you know what, let's do 30. Nice whole number. Now we're gonna add some text. Some more animated text by hitting the text tool over here. And we're going to just hit a random spot and write maximalism. And let's use a different font. Let's not use nationalization. We'll have that as like the main font in the middle. In this case, I'm gonna hit control A, so I select everything. And we're gonna use another font that I found on um, the Adobe 
Adobe font library called Audio Wide. Also looking quite modern and clean. And we're going to change the text smaller, kind of like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to have the text kind of like go along the edge of this border. And how we're going to do that is we're going to animate the text to a path. Yeah, don't worry. I'll show you what that means. We're going to go to the uh, rounded rectangle tool, the same tool that we used before. With this text layer highlighted, we're basically drawing a mask. And we're going to start from here and we're going to basically outline the border and I'll just adjust to the mask. And it doesn't have to be super exact, but somewhere pretty close will be good. And then basically what's going to happen is we're going to click the arrow next to text. We're going to go to path options. And then now under path, we can choose the mask that we just drew and it's going to ride along the edge of this mask as a path. And I can always fine tune this mask a little bit so that, you know, I actually get it as close to the border as possible. But in this case, this is good enough. I'm going to double click on the text so I can alter it. I'm just going to repeat this text multiple times throughout the entire border. So maybe something in between, it can be like a like a dot. How do you do that bullet dot? I don't think there's a key on that for my keyboard. So bullet dot symbol. I'm just going to copy and paste that. All right. So we have that nice bullet dot. And then we're going to basically just copy and paste this uh, multiple times. So we're going to hit control V, hit control V. And I'm just going to make sure that I hit control V until it goes around my border. This is all looking fine and dandy until it's about to line up. And then now when it gets this close, I can't fit in one more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all the text by just double clicking the text layer. And then I'm going to change the font size to uh, fill in that gap. So I'm going to try 15 point one, a little bit too much. Okay. 15.08. Close enough. Then now if I just fit it to hundred percent, as you can see, the text is along that path that we drew, but we need to animate it. And how we do that is we go to the first margin over here. You can keyframe it like you normally would. So you can have it so that it's set to zero right now, hit the stopwatch, go all the way to the end, and then just, you know, drag it all the way like that so that it moves like this. And this is looking pretty good. At this point, you're basically done the animating text portion of the tutorial. Everything else now is to lean more into maximalism and to actually make this look better. And how we can do that is by creating a background. So let's start by creating a grid. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to hit Control Y. So it creates a new uh, solid like that. We'll rename it to grid. And then we're going to apply the grid effect by hitting the shortcut control space bar, which brings up effects console. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's by video copilot and it just saves me a bit of time from having to go all the way to the effects and presets panel to pull up an effect. So now I have this instead where I can type in my effect, which is grid in this case, hit that. And then now I have grids. So I want to adjust the parameters of this and I'm going to hit this panel over here, the effects control panel, and I'm going to change the size from instead of corner point, I'm going to use a width and height slider. That's a little bit better, but let's do something like 35 and 35. So it's nice and even. So I have these grids now and I don't like how this grid is leaking like basically everywhere. It's outside of the border. It doesn't look clean, super messy. And although we want to fill in all the negative space, we don't want it to look obnoxious. So to contain it within kind of the borders, what we're going to do is use a mat and we can basically use the same shape that we use for the border as a mat basically telling how much of this grid we want to actually show hit control d while you have the shape layer highlighted we're going to move that on top of the grid layer and we're going to call this mat it's nice to be nice and organized so what we're going to do is we're going to fill it with white like this and then we're going to highlight this grid layer and we're going to go to track mats and if you don't see this uh track mat option what you can do is click the button toggle switches and mode. So these are some tools that I've already went over in the previous tutorial on minimalism. So I might be going a little bit fast, but I do want to be clear and concise for you guys. So I'm going to click the track mat option and we're going to change it to luma mat. And basically whatever that is in this shape layer, uh, it'll show. So now it's not leaking out of the borders like what it was doing earlier. And if I want to be even more nitpicky, what I can do is hit the arrow over here for the mat and we can change the size of the rectangle path so that the size is kind of like this and we can bring it in a little bit closer and we can do the same thing from the bottom and now it's even more contained and if i don't like how like fat this rounded corner is we can make it a little bit sharper by going to roundness over here and we can lower the value so it's kind of matching the same roundness as the uh, rest of the text and then we're going to go to these layers this mat and this grid and we can even change the color to something like uh, purple so that they're unified and it's easier to see on our timeline and we're going to put that on the very bottom like that and then we're going to change the opacity for this grid by hitting T, bringing that up. And then we're just going to change it to something a little bit less obnoxious. So something like 
20, let's do 25. So now it feels like the rest of the space is a little more filled. But when I look into maximalism, there's usually a little more stuff going on. So we're gonna add a little more details here and there. So I'm gonna drop in some assets from my digital product called Enter the Future. If you don't know what that is, it's a motion graphic asset pack for the modern creator. They're assets that I handcrafted and includes a variety of them. So you can use them for your music videos, commercials, live streams, narrative films, you name it. So if you need transitions, borders, or custom text animations to give your video a modern edge, then I recommend checking it out. Now in this case, I've already imported some into my assets folder and I'm just gonna go down like this into the future and I already have two of them so I have one where I customized a label like this which I think fits the theme of what we're going for nice and modern and we're gonna hit s so we can bring up the scale and we're just gonna shrink it down a little bit kind of like this so it's not taking up too much attention I guess and we're gonna move it to the corner over here kind of like that and we'll even line it up to the edges of that border like so and then I have one more asset called tape and I'm just gonna drag and drop that in kind of like that and we're going to rescale that so and we're going to move that and align that to the very top and we're going to hit Control d to duplicate that tape asset and then we're just going to move it to the bottom over here so it's nice and aligned to the bottom of the grid like that of course it's kind of like leaking out so what we can do is we can highlight these two tape assets or whatever that you decide to put in hit Control shift c so we pre-compose it and just make sure to move all the attributes into the new composition like that and then we're going to use the same mat that we used earlier for the grid man it's been a long day and we're gonna highlight it like this hit Control d we're gonna move that to the top of this pre-comp and i'll just rename it to like tape animation like that and just like before we're gonna go to the track mat options like this and hit luma mat so that way it stays within the constraints of that shape so it looks like this now of course it's kind of like overlapping with the layer over here which doesn't look so good so we can just draw a mask by highlighting this tape animation layer going to a shape layer in this case doesn't quite matter what it is and I can just do something like this and then we're going to change the mask to subtract so we subtract the area that we just drew and this is basically what it looks like I'm going to play it back fitting it up to 100 not bad hit control s so we make sure we don't lose all the progress that we made because all our hard work should not go in vain oh yeah there's one more thing i wanted to do so if you want to make things look a little more filled you can duplicate your text layer and use an outline version of it it goes with some trends uh, that i've seen in modern designs where they're big they're outlined and they're also kind of like hidden so let me show you what i mean we're going to go to the maximalism text which is the one that we animated earlier this middle one we're going to hit control d to duplicate it and then we're going to hit the arrow so we see more options over here and we're going to delete all the effects that we applied by highlighting them i'm just holding down the control key and then clicking the effects that i want to delete hit the big delete key it's actually not that big and now we have this layer where there is no effect applied to it so what we're going to do is we're going to change the size by a lot we're going to hit s we're going to make it nice and big like that and because it's a text layer it's not going to lose any of its quality and then we're going to have it so that we swap the fill and the stroke as this nice little reminder tells me what it does and what happens is once we click that we now have an outline but we have no fill but we don't see an outline right now and the reason is because it's right now set to zero so this is where you want to set the uh, stroke width and we're going to bring it up to something like let's do one this actually might be a little bit too thick let's do 0 0.8 and then we're going to highlight that and we're going to call this maximalism but like big outline we're gonna hit t to bring up the opacity and then we're just gonna bring down the opacity to something like 50 percent and then we're gonna animate this but we're gonna do a very simple animation in which we will hit p and we're gonna adjust the position so i'm gonna go all the way to zero like over here and then i'm gonna make sure that's highlighted and i'm going to change the x position kind of like all the way over kind of like this and I don't need to see the whole thing. This is more like just a detail. So I don't, it doesn't need to necessarily be like legible. So this could be a nice starting position. We'll hit the stopwatch. So we keyframe it and then go all the way to the end over here. And then we'll just adjust the position over like that. And let's play it back to see if we like the speed. I don't, I don't like the speed. And I think the reason is because it's looking like it's going the same direction as this tape animation. And it's like not the same speed. So it's kind of weird. So what I'll do is I'm actually going to invert this top tape asset. This is just me being a little bit nitpicky, but I'm going to go into the pre-comp of the tape animation in this top one, which is this layer over here. I'm going to right click it, uh, hit time, and then time reverse layer. So it's going the other direction. So they're not both going from right to left. So now if I play it back, this looks a little less weird. And just like before where this text is leaking out of the border, we're going to use a mat, uh, this one over here, duplicate it by hitting control D and then place it right on top of the big outline text layer and then change the track mat to Luma mat. And there we go. 
Now everything is black and white, monochromatic, and you know some things are just not standing out because it's starting to look a little bit messy to be honest with all these overlays. So we need to make certain parts kind of like pop. And what we'll do is change the color of the main text, this middle one that is animated. And I can either change the color over here, or what I can do is add an effect to it so that I can copy that color effect to other things that I want to apply the same color instead. So we're gonna pull up the effects console. We're gonna type in fill. And just like that, the default will be red. But if I go to the effects control panel and change it to something more like teal, and we're going to copy that effect by hitting control C, and then we'll find the other things that we want to change the color of. So in this case, maybe the border. So that's shape layer one here. This is why I rename things, rename it to border. And then now I hit control V. So that is now a teal color as well. I think I want to change basically anything that's not like super important to be blue. So in this case, I'll also change the label by hitting control V, but that changes it to a solid color. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply a new effect to this one called tint like that. And basically it'll map the white to certain colors. And we will basically change the color by hitting the eyedropper tool and then just clicking that color. And then we're gonna delete this fill so that now we have this. Now, if I think that certain things are a little bit distracting, in this case, for example, the grid is looking a little bit, a little, little too much. We're gonna go back to the grid, hit T, and then we'll change the opacity to something like 15, okay, maybe like 17. And as for this outline text, we can hit T and we can bring that down to something like 35. So it's a little less distracting. And for the tape animation, it's not super important. So we'll change that to something like 35 as well. And you know what? We'll make that teal as well by copying the tint effect from the label over to the tape animation. And then now, this is what we got. So this is basically it. This is looking pretty good. Now you can go balls to the walls and just take this with a bunch of different things. But basically the idea is that you want to fill up all the negative space so that it feels very rich and there's always something to look at and it's very eye-catching. In this case, I'm quite happy with this. One final detail that I like to add, a little bit of like a secret sauce that I like to add to things is a uh, chromatic aberration. Nice little final touch, that cherry on top by pre-composing everything by hitting Control A. So all of my layers are highlighted. I'm going to hit Control Shift C and we'll call this base layer like that. And we're going to create this RGB split effect. So we create this chromatic aberration in After Effects and we're going to duplicate this layer twice. So we have three of them and we're going to use an effect called shift channels. So we're going to bring that up, shift channels like that. And for this first layer over here, we're going to take the reds from red and then take green from full off, blue from also full off. And we're going to hit control C. So we copy this effect because we're going to paste it to the one on top like that. Except for this one, we're going to change the red to full off and then take green from green like that and then on this top layer we're going to paste the effect as well and the only one left is blue so we're going to take blue from blue and then make sure that the rest is full off so now we have a blue a green and a red layer so turning them all on we're going to highlight all of them and change the blending mode over here to screen and now it looks like nothing has happened and the reason that i'm doing this is because we're going to split the rgb and that's why it's called an RGB split effect. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the middle clean so it doesn't have that chromatic aberration. I just want the chromatic aberration to be happening along the edges. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to hit this bottom layer. I'm going to apply a new effect called Optic Compensation. Optics Compensation. I didn't know there was an S in there the entire time. And we're going to go to this over here, Reverse Lens Distortion. I'll just pull that out so you can read that like that. We're going to check that. And then we're going to change the value of this field of view to something a little more. And as you can see, the middle it doesn't look like much has much is really happening but along the edges over here like this text animation over here you can see as i change this number it starts splitting away a little more and we're going to copy this effect and we're going to paste it to maybe the top one and then we're going to change the value of this just a little bit so now we have something like this very nice one final touch that i want to add to this i'm going to create a new adjustment layer like that and we're going to rename it to noise and we're going to apply the effect called noise and we're going to change the noise amount to something like seven percent and the reason i'm adding noise to this is to give it kind of like an analog feel so it doesn't feel too clean and digital it gives this kind of like grungier look to it and if i don't like this whole like colored noise then i can always uncheck the use color noise so it's black and white and then this just makes the animation look a little more alive and if i fit it up to 100 and play it back this is your animation that is it guys. That's how you make this sick text animation with a maximalism theme. It's a fun word to say. Maximalism has like this epic weight to it. Now we went through quite a few techniques to accomplish this. So hopefully you find some use for it on other projects, even if it doesn't involve maximalism. Things like the flicker effect, tracking effect, and even animating text along a shape path are just popular techniques that give that modern edge. Let me know in the comments what you end up using this text animation for. Oh, and a really big tip, make sure that you subscribe to the Olufemi channel so you don't miss the remaining three videos 
on text animation. So far, we've covered minimalism and this time maximalism. Hit the bell notification so that you can stay on top of things and check out the one on minimalism if you haven't done so already. If you want to see what I'm personally up to, you can check on my Instagram and my YouTube. Both the handles are right there below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.